Hello, hello everyone. It is Mikela Malazi from Bare Feet. It is Tuesday. It is Bare Feet Live Day. I know I always say this, it's my favorite day. It really is my favorite day. And today our Bare Feet Live is going to be a travel Tuesday. Uh, we are not going to be dancing necessarily today, but we are going to be talking with one of my dear friends, fellow travel host, Emmy Award winning host on PBS and Create and Amazon Prime Video, and also a mentor of mine. He and his wife were one of the first people who ever sort of uh, put me on this path of public television, so I'm super grateful to both of them. But I'm excited to have Joseph Rosendo of Joseph Rosendo's Travel Scope on with me today. Hello, Joseph. Hey, how are you doing? Good, how are Good, you? Uh, nice to see you. I like uh, uh, Travel Tuesday. Uh, it's it kind of, now I'll, Taco Tuesday will leave my mind forever. <laughs> so that's Taco. what I think about when I think of Tuesdays. Is right? Taco. Taco Tuesday, Travel Tuesday. Well, you know, since we haven't been able to travel in such a long time, like our, our real travel, yeah. Travel Tuesday has another meaning now, doesn't it? It feels a, a little different of this uh, aspirational um, sort of joy that we miss of traveling. Um, and for everybody on here who's joining us, Joseph Rosendo's Travel Scope. This is Joseph Rosendo, executive producer, host, traveler, and now author. This is why we're having you. Yes. You Yay. just released your book. Yes. Yay. Bravo. See, not, not everything's bad about the pandemic. Uh, this is a book I've been wanting to collect, a collection of my stories that I've been wanting to do for 20 years. And so the pandemic, forced me to sit down and get it together. So it works out pretty good. That's wonderful. Now for everybody on here, uh, Joseph Rosendo is an incredible travel host. Your season 11 is now airing on PBS stations across the country. And I met you, I, I wanna share this story because it means so much to me. Um, I met you back, uh, it must've been, I don't know, 2013 maybe? Yeah. Somewhere back then, maybe 2012 at the New York Times Travel Show. Right. I heard you speak, it was wonderful. Um, and you mentioned something like, you know, my wife and I, my wife's my producer, I'm the host and I get to pick where I wanna go. And at that time I was, I had this idea to make a TV show where I travel and dance and I went up to you and gave you my card and we sort of stayed in touch, not too much, um, but then we're reconnected a, a couple of years later and you were the first person to introduce me to Millie, our dear love of our lives, Millie Perez right. from NYC Life, who gave me my first shot on the local public television station, NYC Life. Um, and you changed my life. Millie changed yeah. my life. I know Millie changed your life. And it's this beautiful travel family within the public media system that everybody supports each other you know it's it's this beautiful beautiful family i really consider it a family and i want to thank you and your wife julie Absolutely. for believing in me and like seeing the insanity in me that you have to have to start right. a television series i think we saw yeah you came up after the uh my presentation at the new york times travel show where i was doing uh travel is a life-changing experience kind of mm -hmm. thing. And uh, you were real excited. You had, my wife says, uh, my wife, Julie says you had, it was obvious you had the secret sauce oh, to you. succeed at this thing because it takes, as you know, absolute total dedication or else it can't get done. You have to love it more than uh, be looking for remuneration for what you do or whatever. You got you to really love what you're doing. You got to love travel and you've got to love um, the opportunity of bringing the excitement of travel to to people and yeah. to meeting people too, and you had that, and it was obvious. Uh, you know, we had we have several, we have many people come up to us after those presentations with ideas about shows and oh yeah, I'd love to do that. You have a wonderful life, which is true. We have yeah. a blessed life, but uh, you were obviously the person who could make it happen because oh, you had the determination, you had the talent. And you had the the love, the passion to to make it happen, and uh, that was quite 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 obvious. Quite Thank obvious. you. Thank yeah. you, Joseph. That's we just... all have great stories about Millie. You know, my story is the day we were in New York to get funding for uh, Joseph Rosendo's Travel Scope. We had just met with the funders, and my wife, being in PBS World because she had worked in San Antonio, Texas, 
I see we have uh, some of your uh, viewers are from San Antonio. Victor, and yeah, Victor, we love that he's on every week. So San Antonio, you're her, Julie's home city. Right, she was the, worked at KLRN, the uh, PBS station in San Antonio. We met there in San Antonio and I was doing a radio, I did radio for 20 years, uh, radio, travel radio, remote broadcast, and she was running a, this wine event. So I met her there. Anyway, she had this experience with the whole PBS world, and she said, you know, and I told her, hey, there's this woman in New York, and I got her on the phone, and I'm going to call her up. We're here in New York and see if we can go meet her. She said, you never, never, ever call the programmers. Never, <laughs> never. Don't ever call programs. Worst thing you could possibly do. They'll don't want to bother it. them. They don't want to hear the, from the producer. They don't want to hear, you know. And yeah. I said, oh, okay, so but I'm going to call her anyway. So I did. And uh, she said, yeah, come on up. So uh, we came up and we went in. And uh, after talking to her for a while, uh, you know, she's a Puerto Rican heritage. I'm a Cuban heritage. So we kind of hit it off mm -hmm. as Latinos. And uh, she said, yeah, I can do this show. I walked out of there with a gigantic grin, because we were now on in the number one market in the United States, which was yeah. very impressive to our, our funders. Yeah. And to and uh, so that was very helpful. But we all have wonderful stories. She's a wonderful person. She's amazing. And you know, you and I, we get to see each other. We used to get to see each other once a year at the uh, APT Full Marketplace, which is this congregation of, of PBS programmers, producers, um, and Millie, has changed so many people's lives. She is the sweetest woman, but there are other producers like, if it wasn't for Millie, my show wouldn't exist. If it wasn't exactly. for Millie, I would get no, and it's, we had like a little photo of all the producers that she's like, you know, lifted up and, and helped along the way. And it's just wonderful. Before we keep going, I want to say a quick hello to all these wonderful people on here. Again, yeah. Victor from San Antonio. We got Randy, Eric from Texas, Susanna. Thank you for being here. Mary Beth. Sherry from Wisconsin, David from Canada, thank you so much. Gracie from San Diego, ah, thank you so much. Sherry, you're from Connecticut. Ken from All Good Tech, uh, Tennessee, thank you. Tony Parker, Sissy says, love this guy. Yeah, I love Joseph too, that's why you're here today. Uh, Vito, grazie, thank you for being here. Chris from Upstate New York and Albany, thank you. We got Maureen from New York City. Godwin, thank you always for joining us. Crystal from Las Vegas, mahalo, thank you for being here. Eric from Oklahoma, so many wonderful people. Really? Um, and it's like two worlds colliding right now, right? I, I, I think people don't realize that a lot of the hosts, especially on Create and on public television, we all are friends. We all know each other. We all love each yes. other. Of course, we see each other, as you mentioned. Normally, we see each other at the APT conference every year. And of course, and we have, and listen, it's a big family. PBS and Create are wonderful, wonderful treasure. Uh, an American treasure, and uh, we uh, are all excited about being together on it, and it forms a camaraderie and a support mechanism, uh, support mechanism, yeah, that we all need. And it's fantastic. I wanted to say hi to David from Canada that you have on there, because, you know, we have a lot of shows on Canada. Canada, one of, one of our favorite places to travel. In fact, I'm wearing, this sweater is a sweater I wore on the Rideau Canal show. Hey, so, there uh, you go. So, Bonjour, David. So anyway, <laughs> he's probably, if he's from the, the English part, hi, David. So anyway, so yeah, great. yeah, this is a, it's, it's wonderful for us to help each other and support each other. Yeah. So for everyone and, joining us, oh, continue. I'm sorry. Didn't mean to interrupt. No, you. And, and to just be, have the opportunity, the truth is to have the opportunity and to have the, um, the chance to be able to share with people the wonderful experiences that we have, which yeah. of course is kind of the mantra of my show. Cause as you know, every show ends with a quote from Mark Twain, travel is fatal to prejudice, bigotry and narrow mindedness. And um, so we're able to show people the rest of the world and encourage them to go meet them. These wonderful people from other cultures live and in person and and that way we can come together uh, better as a as a people. Agreed. Agreed. Yeah. A few things I want to ask you about today. First sure. off, I love. Can you tell us how you got into travel? Because I love your story. Yeah. Well, I um, I was uh, an actor at UCLA and uh, many many moons ago, and uh, I was. Uh, 
cast in a play, very popular at that time. They've done a revival called How to Succeed in Business Without Really Trying. And it was a USO show. It was taking us to Europe for the, uh, to entertain the American troops who were there. It was doing the Vietnam era. So there were quite a few there on the way to Vietnam. Mm -hmm. So we were there to entertain the troops. And um, I had never been out of the country. And I got to Europe and I looked around and I thought, oh my gosh, what is this? It chokes me up, as you know, to talk about this experience. It's just so beautiful that we were there and it's just such a mind blowing, uh, eye opening experience. And it kind of is, I can, I can get it down to a nutshell by our first night there in Kaiserslautern, West Germany, we were honorary lieutenants because we were a part of the USO and we were all sitting down for our first night at dinner. And this elegant waiter came over and asked us what we would like to drink. And would we like any wine? And everybody said, yeah, sure, sure, yeah. And so um, so he came over with uh, some wine and, and a carafe, and he asked who would like to taste it. And they decided that I should taste it. Uh, you know, I didn't really have a lot of experience with wine, but I was a Californian now, and so I had I had tasted wine, and I'd seen movies, so I knew how you tasted wine. The swirl so, and the swirl a little bit, you know. Yeah. I looked at the legs, I swirled it around, and checked out the color. I, you know, I put my nose in it. You know, so I I did everything correct, and then you're supposed to sip it. So there were any, and, and he had given me a taste. So it touched my lips, and I just went, oh, whoop. <laughs> And my friend said, uh, Joseph, you're not supposed to gulp it. You're supposed to taste it. And I said, took to the waiter and I said, whatever that is, I want more. Aww. And that was kind of the whole experience mm -hmm. in Europe at that time. Mm -hmm. I kept having these wonderful experiences. I, I was learning about the culture. I was seeing these amazing historic monuments. I was learning about some of the good, the bad, and the ugly of the Europe, Europe history. Right. And I just, and the natural beauty there. And I just kept saying, whatever this is, I want more. And that got me into um, loving travel. And that propelled me to, uh, to do a radio show, a travel radio show, which I did for 20 years. Yeah. And, and that pulled me into, uh, into having uh, the idea to do a, a television show and doing some videos with a friend for five years. Mm -hmm. and, and then meeting Julie, who really made anything possible because, you know, uh, she was the one who basically took that idea that I had and really brought it to fruition, which she does as the executive producer of Travel Scope and other shows, by the way. Yeah, and uh, that really did uh, that really did start things going. But if but it was a matter of having a dream and then committing myself to the dream completely, totally, uh, hundred percent, and then having the world, things fall into place to make that. You know, there's that wonderful quote by uh, Henry David Thoreau. I do a lot of quotes. And because uh, there's a lot of people smarter than I am, and I might as well use, steal their uh, intelligence. Right. Uh, the, Henry David Thoreau said, if one advances confidently in the direction of their dreams and endeavors to live the life they have imagined, they will have a success undreamt of in common hours. Wow. And that... That quote propelled my life and propelled uh, the, uh, the the career and the, and the, the wonderful life I have and the wonderful uh, obligation I've been given to produce and to uh, to produce a link between the people who watch us and read about us and read our adventures and the people that we meet around the world. And it's yeah. so, so important now when we're so separated from each other and yeah. starving for human contact to know that we're not alone. That there's yeah. not only among us in our towns and in our country, there is this world that is uh, really, we're all connected to. We're not alone. We're not separate. It's not us against the world. Mm -hmm. It's the world together against mm -hmm. the things, if we have to be against something, the obstacles that all human beings and that every country has to face, you know? So. Yeah. Yeah, I know what it is. Now, first of all, can I just say it's never a Joseph Rosendo interview without tears. No, <laughs> we always end up crying together. 
And I, I, I had made a note to myself to bring that up because we see you cry in your episodes all the time out of so much emotion from travel, just you talking about traveling. We already, a good friend of ours, Corey Lee from Curb Free with Corey Lee, he was our guest last, uh, last week and he said, well, I'm crying. You know, he's a wonderful traveler. Tell us a little, I know why I cry, but I want you to share a little bit of what is that emotion when you feel sometimes on camera that people see that and feel that. I've gotten that from my viewers too, where they're like, I'm crying with you. But what is that you're feeling when when you're so overcome with emotion just from the from I think, I think just the truth of the moment, the the life that's in the moment, the the you know everything becomes crystal clear uh, that this is uh, uh, what you're here for. Uh, whether it's a monk that I, who's giving me a blessing after I've uh, you know given him an offering. Uh, you know, uh, whether it's uh, being a part of someone else's religious experience. And, you know, I celebrate all religions, all cultures, all people. And so be the Christian or, or, or Muslim or, I mean, Islam or, 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 or Jewish religion, you know, I celebrate them all. And everybody's festival, I celebrate all their festivals. And I think it's what, what really touches me the most is the humanity of it. Mm -hmm. It's that true that line that 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 human that human life line that is in all of us that life force and when you're in when you touch into that I, I, there's only way the only way I can react to it is to be um, is to be emotional about it and you know it's funny you mentioned that because when we were doing the show early on the first years and and I had and I have a tendency to do that. And uh, in the the incident, the the experience I'm talking about with the monk that was uh, out getting alms in the morning, and that happened on camera, and we talked about it afterwards. And you know, you don't want to make your as an actor, I know that you don't want to make your audience uncomfortable with your show of emotion. You want them to feel the emotion. As an actor, I learned that. But we looked at it, and I said, that's a real true moment, and that is the traveler's moment. And that's my message, is these moments are what you're on the hunt for. This is what you're hunting for. This is what you're looking for. And this is how, and what we do in our travel shows is show them how you put yourself in the right mood, in the right position, in the right places where those experiences can happen to you. And those are the experiences that just make you feel more alive than the moment before. And I think that's why it, if it doesn't touch you, I don't know. I don't know how it does it. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I have to agree. I have to agree. I think there's, and I'm sure you can agree with this too, is there's moments of, first of all, the emotion of what's happening in the moment. But then sometimes I step back and have a really heavy cry to be like, this is, this is my life. This is my job. I get to do this. Yeah. And that gets emotional too. It's just not just these incredible once in a lifetime experiences that I'm having, but then the secondary feeling of how lucky am I that this is what I, I'm supposed to be doing at this moment. So I think there's so many levels of emotion. Yeah, well, gratitude is certainly part of it. Yes. Gratitude is certainly part of it. Yeah. And in 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 gratitude of being able to have had that moment. Yes. And I think that, you know, the, 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 the collection of stories that I just, uh, uh, just came out and, and, and the shows, they're all about, uh, that being in gratitude and being in the moment as much as you possibly can, as we go through this, you know, this crazy life and all the things we have to deal with and all the struggles and all the obstacles and all the trials and tribulations that human beings have to deal with. And we're seeing so much of that now during yeah. the pandemic. Yeah. Uh, so much, uh, so much tragedy in that. So yeah. these moments of gratitude uh, become overwhelming and, uh, and, and, and it's, that's our job. Our job is to be aware, you know, uh, one of the religions that I encounter, of course, in my travels, particularly in Asia is the Buddhist religion. And, and they talk about, you know, they talk about bright mindfulness, being mindful, which I've always taken to be, to be ahead, of, to be in the moment, to be mindful of what's happening. Mm -hmm. And 
there's so much joy that comes from being in that moment and 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 there's and it's such a great also a great defense against the fear of losing of loss of losing of losing your ultimately our lives when you know everybody right. dies so there's that fear and then the yeah. fear of being uh, hurt or the fear of being uh, uh, somebody breaking in your house or the fear of, of, of somebody robbing you or something like that it's such a great defense to be absolutely totally in the moment and enjoy in that moment and yeah. that's what we try to promote i know you do that's what bare feet is about dancing i mean what what if dancing isn't about joy what is it about i don't know i don't know we have some wonderful people on here. Kimothy Mason, thank you. She says, I've cried more than once while watching Joseph's show and ours too. Thank you so much. That's just so sweet. And Sabrina is saying attitude of gratitude. I like that. So like that. Yeah. that is beautiful. Um, now you mentioned this quickly, but I want you to go into, because all these stories, they can watch you. Season 11 is now the newest season that's airing on local PBS stations across the country. People can find it on their local uh, station. Um, but you are, you just released a book. Yes. Yes. And, and before, and as you know, too, not only is season 11 airing around the country, oh. season one is airing around the country. Right. Right. The so lovely so thing, about, the lovely thing about being on PBS and on APT and create is that they just love to run those shows so I uh, all, all 100 and you know we have 130 shows. All of them get aired sooner or later. Hang in there; you'll get to see every Travel Scope show. Right. Uh, that's wonderful about PBS. Yes. And Corey, and before that, Corey Lee says, "Is your show on Amazon Prime Video, Joseph? It is, right? It is. Yes, you can uh, stream uh, stream on Amazon. Amazon, and actually, you can go to Amazon and get a copy of the book, which yeah. is Musings." The uh, short, happy pursuit of pleasure and other journeys. So tell, us a bit, tell us a little bit about the book, what we can expect, because I'm assuming we're going to be reading a little more deeper into those emotional moments that you share on the yeah. show. Well, you know, um, it came out of uh, uh, the musings was the title of a column, uh, column I had in my book. Uh, publication, which I started six months after I started my radio show, which I did for 23 years. Mm -hmm. And um, it was a newsletter format uh, publication. And, uh, and, you know, and I, as you can see, I rant and rave about the life travel is a life changing experience, how it could change the world. And I was raised in the 60s. So I really believe we can change the world and peace and love and all that other good stuff. And I would talk to everybody about that, you know, people in restaurants and people in the corner, sitting on the corner. I mean, just get and and uh, my new editor for the newsletter said, "Hey, we need to have a column where you can just kind of spout off in a very kind of safe and sane way about these kinds of things. It can be you can talk about you should talk about travel, but you should talk about all this stuff." So that's what it became. It, it kind of the early ones started out as uh, destination pieces and nuts and bolts pieces of how to travel best, how to get bargain, et cetera. And then it became more and more personal mm -hmm. and became more and more a reflection of how I travel. And that was the travel connection. And then it came, became more and more about the journey we all travel, life, and how it seemed that tra writing about my experiences with my family and uh, traveling as a kid and my uh, my brunch conquering brother and my, uh, you know, my, my early morning travels to, to Key West with my family for our one day trip a year. Uh, mm -hmm. All those became part of not just the travel experience, but it became part of the sojourn of, of life. Yeah. And, and writing about my life and, and the different steps along the way and the different milestones um, it, they, it didn't seem much different than writing a travel show, a story, really, right. because you know I, I I I had these experiences. I learned something. Uh, some of the things I learned, I could carry with me to the next thing, or I had to get rid of them. I picked up, you know, some souvenirs I could carry with me to the next show, or the next trip, or the next day in life, or I had to dump it, and uh, so it became very much like a travel. So. It's a story of my a memoir, uh, travel sh a, a book, uh, uh, a nuts and bolts destination, and a tip piece, 
And it's all of those best stories from over those really 20, 30 years of writing for uh, the publication. Wow. And the newsletter became an uh, uh, online magazine, which is at our, our website, travelscope.net. And it continues. It's been going on for since 1986 in, in one form or another. But the newsletter dropped out in that column. Uh, I kind of stopped writing that column. So this is a collection of those stories. That's beautiful. A bit of everything. That's wonderful. I love that. I love that so much. You know, some people will read them and get angry and some people will read them and laugh and some people will read them and cry, hopefully, yeah. and, and be touched. But, you know, I, I'm just happy if somebody comes along on the ride with me, you know. I love that. I love that. We have a few questions coming in. And for anybody who has questions for Joseph, now's the time to ask. Um, but this is from Gracie. She says, a question for you both. What have you learned from your experiences such as basic mistakes that you didn't see coming? Like, you, go. I, so you go, you start. Huh? Well, I feel like what I've tried to do in my travels is embrace the chaos. Uh, because as you know, when you're filming, not everything goes according to plan. Right. And I would say in every single shoot, every single episode that we've shot, something goes terribly wrong, which you don't see on camera, obviously. But then what happens from that is so much better than what we could have planned for. Um, and that comes a lot in our show, especially there's always a lot of lost in translation. Uh, a lot of times I try, we tell the people or we work with the tourism boards or our hosts and we say, I have to dress up and learn the dance and learn the and dress in costume and, and, and dance with people. And we get there and they're like, here's a performance, Michaela. It's wonderful. And sit and watch. And I'm like, no, 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 no. I flew all the way from the other side of the world to come and participate. And there's a big like miss you know, lost in translation, miscommunication. And then when we get, when when we somehow convince them, like, let me just try and then it works. And those are the magical moments that come that weren't supposed to happen. To exactly. be so, or we miss a train and then someone we meet on the way. It's, it's these embrace the chaos moments, I like to say of, you can either have a horrific experience based on your outlook of it, or you can make Making lemon lemonade out of lemons, right? It's yeah, really. How many times have we had to do that? Uh, I, I, I would say that what it taught me is how to recognize what is Pico Iyer, the great travel writer, calls the significant moment. The significant moment, and you're on a trip, and there are a lot of things going on, but there are these moments, these significant moments, and I, I you know, so when we are on location. I'm looking for those because those are going to make the show, but they're also going to make as a traveler, we should look for them because those are going to make the trip. Right. Those are going to be the thing that you're going to take with you to your grave. Mm -hmm. Those will be the memories that you'll always remember because those are the significant moments. So I, I learned how to recognize the significant moment. And, uh, and 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 how to put myself in a situation where those significant moments can happen. And sometimes it happens by just going with the flow on something that seems like it's completely falling apart. And uh, other times it's by having the, the sense to say, like markets, I love to go to markets. And yeah. when we get ready to film in a market, you know, I have the sound guy and the cameraman and me, and we look at each other and I say, okay, here we go. Here we go. And the idea is to go and have moment, have, an, have, a, have a relationship, have an ex experience with people. And some of the best moments in Travel Scope, uh, you'll see it, it, us in a market. And, it, and they all just happen. And yeah. it's tremendously challenging for the crew. I mean, yeah. How do you shoot me and shoot the other person and the right light? And right. how do you pick up his volume? Because we normally don't mic those experiences because the the we put a mic on people, yeah. the spontaneity goes. Yeah. So yeah, I would say that uh, go with the flow, keep, stay flexible, go with the flow uh, that, and, uh, and look out, keep your, keep your antenna out for those moments and then go into those moments you know, walking down a, a canal in Bruges, Belgium with uh, a girlfriend uh, when I was doing the radio show and, um, and, and it, who wanted to go back to the hotel room because she was tired. And I kept saying, well, let's just go to the next lamppost. 
what, what if we just go to the next lamppost? Okay, at the end of the next lamppost, right. we'll go back. Next lamppost, there was a pub. Oh, well, why don't we just go in and have one beer? Okay, so we went in, we sat in, and then these, this family, which his wife, this guy's wife, learned English from watching American movies. They saw we were American, and, and, he, and, and I was watching them play snooker, a pull, and they said, and he said, you know how to play. That's about the only word he knew how to say. <laughs> and I said, no, which is about all I could say. And then he said, come over to the table. He took us over to the table. His wife spoke to us. Uh, kind of, we, we ran the evening like that. At the end of the evening, we closed down the pub. At the end of the evening, we, he took us. They took us back to their house. They shared with us uh, for our, as a nightcap brandy that they had gotten at their at, on their wedding. They had oh, kept for many God. years. And at one point in the evening, and he was going to go to work in Germany the next day. And his wife looked at him because he she saw him look at his his watch at about three o'clock in the morning, and she said. Yeah, you're going to be, she's obviously said to him, yeah, you're going to be sorry oh, when you no. have to go to work. What a and I said, and none of us understood that. And I said, well, you only live once. And he reached over and grabbed me by the arm and said, you're right. And we said that, he said that in Dutch. I said that in English. It was like the significant moment. So that's what I learned is to look yeah. for that. Yeah. That yeah. overcomes all, but there are no mistakes. There are yeah. no mistakes. Yeah. I They're all that. leading to something. Yeah. We have Evan saying the only channel that's ever on in this house is Create. Thank you, Evan. We love Create too. We love being part of the family. And I love your show, Joseph, especially thank if you. it's south of Chile. And I love your show too. Oh, thank you. But both beautiful shows that also made me cry. We, uh, we, we tend to cry a lot. The, Joseph yeah. and I are big criers on, yeah. <laughs> on Create. But yeah, You know, well, you know, what, what are you going to do? It's either hide the emotion and and present a front or I no you, you want to you want to present people as a, a travel host you want to present uh you want to be the person that stands you want to be the person who stands in for them you want to be their advocate and you want to be you want to be them you yeah. want the viewer to say that's me I can do that I can be there I can have that experience and I'm so I'm leaving tomorrow to right. have that experience right. and I, I love that as you're successful, you know, if you're successful at this, it's because you can instill that I want to be you in your viewers. Yeah, and we have that from Jim. That's so funny that you say that. Jim says, I love you both, Yeah, that you both interact with the people and destination you go to. Makes me feel like I did the visit. That's, you know, that's exactly what we're talking about. And that's what, to me, that's what travel is. It's the people, not necessarily the place. It's the people we get to meet. And the it's people, all the people, yeah. Thank yeah. you, Jim. Thank you, Jim, for uh, reinforcing my point there. Yeah, uh, and I didn't yeah. have to pay him anything or anything. No. <laughs> that wasn't planted, right? That Just wasn't a plant. Thanks, Jim. Oh. I don't know him. Oh. Now I do. Leslie's asking advice on breaking the ice ice with others as you travel. What's some good advice? Well, always helps to have a little bit of the language. Language does help, and you don't have to be fluent in it. Uh, you certainly need to know how to say bonjour. You need to say how to say thank you and gracias or, uh, you know, uh, please, por favor, or whatever. You need to be able to know those basic things so that people will see that you care. People want to talk to you. People want to tell you about themselves. People want to share with you their experience. And if they see you're a, a, a stranger, a traveler, uh, somebody who's come to their country to learn something, they're maybe a little bit afraid of you because they don't know uh, your life. But if you break the ice by saying bonjour, at least bonjour, and a few other words, and you and you have a, some, some working uh, knowledge of the language, a little bit, not much, yeah. people will, first of all, feel really good about you. Yeah feel that you care about their culture and them, that you went so far as to learn how to say hello. And, and if you don't, you'll they'll have a different impression of you. And that will certainly break the ice. Yeah. And asking, you know, asking for help and being humble in your approach. You know, you, we don't want to be the ugly anything, ugly American, ugly anything. Right. We, you know, we, won't, we don't have one to assume that just because people work in a, in a tourist restaurant that you know that they, they 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 speak our language, and you know we need to we need to make the effort. You want to think good things to happen to you? You have to reach out. 
Yeah. 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 I a hundred percent agree. I always learn at least thank you in the local language, because if you say thank you in that language, in their mother tongue, their eyes light up and they're they They want to give you more that, you know, yeah. share more of their culture, share more of their story, share more of their food, share more of their dance. It's that just imagine if you hear thank you in your own language from a foreigner, it makes you feel that they really that that they really are truly thankful, right? I, I, for me, that's always been the thing. And when I go to a place, first thing is, how do I say thank you? Because I, that's constantly what I say. I think it's so powerful. How do you say thank you? How do you say please? Mm -hmm. it's very important. Yeah, uh, we have uh, both of us. Here's a question for you both: How do your travels influence your perspective on humanity? Wow. That's a big one. And how many nations have you both traveled to, respectively? Joseph, I'll let you go because we we talk about this often. I think it, it's sort of a, a, well, I'll let you go. Well, I've been to 93 countries. And uh, uh, and I think I've shared with you, my perspective on, on humanity is very, very high, very, uh, very uh, hopeful, uh, very wonderful. Uh, you know, uh, you know I, I, I don't think that there is anything as people in this world and I'll just say it. I don't think that any countries are blank whole countries. Mm -hmm. There are no countries in the world that are like that. Mm -hmm. I've been in places where people didn't have anything. But they had a sense of the moment. Mm -hmm. And they had a sense of what was important. And they had a sense of what was necessary and what was not necessary. Mm -hmm. And that's what I could learn from them. Mm -hmm. You know, whether it was in, you know, I'm in, you know, I've been in Rwanda, which is one of the poorest countries in in Africa, where where people I, I, where people were so gracious and, and wonderful and beautiful. You know, a country that suffered a genocide and then was able to come off of that and to come together around the fact that this this had, this could never happen again. I mean, you know, people that, that there's so much to learn from these developing countries, you know, uh, underdeveloped countries. So whatever we call them, third world countries. I hate that phrase. Uh, you know, so much that the first world can learn from the third world. Uh, and one of the things is is what is truly necessary, and what is truly important, mm -hmm. and what do you what really can you not live without. And there, you know, there's some basic things you can't live without, uh, and um, you know, I've seen it, but I've also seen um, uh, how 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 people can persevere in the face of amazing obstacles and continue to survive. It's when you travel around the world and you see all these cultures and you're open to them, you're learning from them, and you will feel so good about mankind you will all the horrible things that we have done uh, to each other and to the planet and to what, what, everything still you will come away still thinking like Anne frank i still think people are good mm -hmm. that's beautiful um a few more questions we have evan uh have you ever formed a strong friendship with someone abroad that you met while making your shows that has lasted to this day Oh yeah, sure. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. The answer is definitely. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. And, uh, uh, and you know, it, it, the problem with doing a show and trying to meet people. I mean, we're worse situation than you are. You're on vacation and you're open, and you need to be out there with your heart open and your mind open and having those things. You know, and we're kind of watching. Okay, we got we we, we got. We're working. We're working. Yeah, we're working. We're working. So it's it's a little bit more difficult to do that. Not impossible. And I certainly have done that and keep in touch with uh, friends in uh, in France and 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 in different in different locations throughout the world. People still call. People call us. People call my wife from uh, from Rwanda. People call my wife from Rwanda. Rwanda, by the way, has the greatest telephone system in the world. It's very inexpensive to have a phone, and you can call anywhere, anyway. Speaking anywhere, of, <laughs> anywhere, right now, there's that one. Was that, that was on Q2, right? Is yeah, that Rwanda yeah. calling? Uh, call, call anywhere in the world. I mean, they really—it's really great when you're traveling in Rwanda because you can 
get a phone very cheaply in the SIM cards. It's cheap and yeah. we can call anywhere in the world. So we get calls from Rwanda. My wife regularly gets a call from a person who she met when we were in one of the markets. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and, 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 and it's just these kinds of experiences that people that you share with people. Everybody knows it's important. Everybody knows what a significant moment is. They know it. You know it. What you do when you meet people and how you treat them and how those moments you have with them, they don't forget it. Yeah. We have friends we you know in, in France who I just got an email from them today who keep us abreast of what's going there with the lockdown there because we have plans to go to France in January and then we made a backup plans for April whether right. we'll make it or not who knows right but, but we're we're still trying but right. yes yes the answer yeah. is yeah I mean, I, going back to your your story about Bruges uh walking in the streets that memory stuck to you because of the people you met. And I of think course. it's important for people to realize when you travel, it's you, yeah, you might remember the sites and, 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 but I bet if you're going to the Eiffel tower, you probably remember the, the person that was waiting in line with you. You, you chatted up and started a conversation and ended up opening a bottle of wine together. Or that's how I feel is that when I go to these places, I remember a lot of the scenery based on doing edits from my show. But the people that I remember are the, the strongest memories I have. And what's wonderful is a lot of people don't know this, but our whole second season, everyone that we feature in Bare Feet and NYC are my friends. They're all people that I've ever danced with in my entire, pretty much my entire life, almost every single person. Um, because I wanted to showcase dancers in New York City, the, the multicultural dance and ethnic uh, communities that are in, in New York City. Our season premiere of season three, the DNA season, we met with Canzoniere Grecanico Salentino, the, the, the Pizzica band. I met them while they were on tour in New York nine years ago, sort of stalked them and, and became friends with them. And then when I knew we wanted to film Puglia, I reached out to them and said, hey, we want to do an episode. So these connections, all of these people that I've been able to dance with, I've stayed friends with. Thank goodness for the power of social media. I think without things like Facebook and Instagram, it would have been much more difficult to stay in touch, but it is such a powerful tool. You know, social media, take out the media part, it's to be social. Right. right. <laughs> and so um, all of the people I've ever danced with, uh, we stay in touch. I send them Christmas cards. I, it, whenever I can go back and visit a place twice, I've been to Buenos Aires three times and one of, Inez Rossetti, who's, I call her my tango angel. She's one of my dear, dear friends. And I met her in Buenos Aires first in 20, what was it? We were filming in 2012. Yeah. So these are years of friendships from travel. That's, that's what happens in travel. You make these friendships. And again, I'll say this over and over again, but I really believe that the, the memories that stick with me the most, at least, are the people that I meet. Oh, and the experiences I have with the people from those places, not just the actual surroundings, because yeah, yeah, I mean that those that you don't go ticking off landmarks and say you know you have to go to Paris, you have to see the Eiffel Tower, and the Arc de Triomphe, and the Place de Concorde, and go to the Louvre. You have to do these things; these are important. But what you're going to remember is the person in the cafe that you sat next to. Yep, we talked to you. And uh, and you shared a, uh, a, a something to eat with, and something a glass of wine with, and yeah. he told you about his family, and you and you told him about your family, yeah. and then those are the those are the things that make the trip. And I was going to say that the other thing is these. What's great is that these kinds of experiences, these significant moments, these moments with people, are affirmations of you doing the right thing. Mm -hmm. That you you get an affirmation that I'm in, I'm in the right spot doing the right thing and acting in the right way. We need that. We have a lot of, of affirmation in the world telling us all the things we do wrong and all the ways we're not good enough. You know, just look at the ads on TV. We're not pretty enough, uh, big enough, tall enough, white enough, uh, whatever, you know, uh, but these moments that you get when you have these moments with people, you say, yeah, I, I was a part of that experience. Mm -hmm. It isn't something they just gave you. It's that mutual connection and the mutual energy between you two that you know made that moment. And you can walk away from that and say, yeah. So I, so we get you get to look at your life 
and say, look at all the affirmations I've got on the fact that I'm really a good person and all those other people are really good people too. Yeah, we have a we have a little bit of um, PBS royalty on here. Uh, Kevin O'Leary, who's Samantha Brown's executive producer and husband says, Samantha and I both love your shows. Thank you, Kevin, for being here with us today. Of course, we love you and Sam so much. She yeah, absolutely. Leader, fear, fearless leader here, right? <laughs> Terrific. Uh, one last question before we sign off. Um, yeah. I think this is more of a-, a Where do you get the book? Oh, right. <laughs> Logistical question is, how do you both tackle jet lag? I always have had such difficult time adjusting to different time zones. I think that's a good question to ask, especially when we can start traveling to the to different time zones again. Yeah, well, there's a lot of, you know, there's different medication out there that they say you could take. I've tried one and, you know, we have a, 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 a transparent Our One of our un underwriters is no jet lag. And I use that. And that really kind of kind of works. It's a whole, holistic. Uh, but um, but I think you need to get on the time zone as quickly as possible. So uh, if, if with working, it's really difficult. But the, if it means staying out, staying really way, way late, so you're completely, totally exhausted and staying up, uh, then you need to do that. You need to get on the time zone. You know, there's lots of things about light and um, going out. And certainly, uh, you know, I, I still invariably end up getting up uh, in the morning um, really, really early because, first of all, I like to be out on the streets early in the morning and, and seeing people. But, um, you know, that's just the way it goes. Yeah. Uh, but, and, you know, and uh, I take melatonin if, if I have to for the first uh, couple of three nights so I can get on the uh, time zone. But, you know, we're, we're pretty much hit the ground running. Yeah. So I have to get on the time zone there, yeah. uh, right away. But for, I think for the average traveler, just, you know, take it, take it easy, but get up. Don't, don't lay in bed till noon on that first day. Get up and yeah. go to your petit déjeuner downstairs in the cafe and join the crowds. And if you get tired, then take a break in the middle of the day. Yeah. I like to, especially if you have a shorter trip or you want to make as much as you can from the time that you have, if you're doing a big time differences, the second I get on the plane or to the airport for when I'm leaving, I change my watch to the local time zone of where I'm ending up. Exactly. And then I do what I'm supposed to be doing in that time zone. So if I get on the plane and it says it's two in the morning where I'm going, then I'm like, it's time to go to bed. And I try and sleep on the plane and I never eat the food on the plane. Wow. I never do. I'll pack food for my trip so that if I need to eat before the flight starts, Mm. I'm already full because if you if you have to wait to eat the meal on the plane, they don't serve until at least an hour, an hour and a half until the flight takes off. And so if you're like, OK, it's 2 a.m. where I'm going, then I won't eat till 3.30 and then I'm going to die. You know, it's like go to bed. And so you're already a, a little bit ahead of the game. That's how that's kind of how I, I tackle it. Oh, well, that's um, good. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. I know I said that was the last question, but we have one last one, just a fun one. And it says Eric is asking, when are we going to be doing a show together, Joseph? <laughs> yeah, when? Good idea. <laughs> That is, we will. Yeah, yeah, we, at least we should be in the same place at the same time so that we can, uh, we can, we can be thing. on each other's show. Sometimes yeah. like that. That's what uh, we should do. You know, we'll, we'll reach out to Destination and say it, you'll get three shows in one, a bear show, go. a travel scope show, and a joint travel show. Uh, you know, we get your your show and, and also our, our show. Yeah. yeah. We get three the three shows. That's a great deal. It's, it's three a great for one. Deal. It's Great a three business plan. Let's <laughs> work for it. Well, Joseph, I want to thank you so much for being our guest on on this week's uh, Bare Feet Live, and it's our Travel Tuesday again. Tell everyone where they can find your new book, Musings, which I'm super excited to be reading as well, and check out all your shows. I'm going to put up your website so that everybody can find everything. Travel Scope on Great. PBS, on Amazon Prime. Um, your book musings on Amazon and on your website and just, just a lovely, lovely, lovely human being and traveler. And your wife, Julie is just the most wonderful. Um, and so I just want to thank you so much and yeah, thank you. It's just I such do. a pleasure to have you on here. Thank you. And if they go to the website, you're right. They can find out about the book and, and the DVDs and everything else that we do and our shows, what shows 
And they can stream the shows on Amazon and they can buy the book on Amazon. Wonderful. Thank you so much. You know, it's always a pleasure to see you. It's always a, a ball. I miss our our wild and crazy dance contest at the this year. With the uh, well, you know what? When we get them back in 2021, it'll be that much sweeter. I think. Yes. You know, yes. well. Oh, there she is. Julie, there she is. And here's the our my executive producer and wife, Julie Rosendo. There, there you go. go. And executive producer of other shows on, on public television as well. So Absolutely. Julie, thank you for believing in all these creators and producers and hosts and helping us share our stories. And we're so grateful for everything that you do for Joseph and for everyone else. So thank you, you so much. Yeah. Thank you. We love Thanks. you all. Thank you. Love you all. Have a we'll have a and wonderful show. holiday time. And enjoy yourself. Joy, joy, joy is the word. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, Joseph. Thank you, Julie. See you guys soon.